This is Mr. Edwin Jamross. Uh, Ed, tell us how old you are. 91. Ed's 91. He's going to have uh, vascular screenings done today at the Potterville United Methodist Church. Uh, we're going to look at his carotid arteries for plaque. Uh, we'll be scanning the abdominal aorta, looking for aneurysm or weakening of the uh, aortic walls. And then we'll be doing a, a ABI, which is ankle brachial index, on his uh, both of his ankles and one of his arms, uh, looking for peripheral artery disease, a disease that affects the uh, arterial flow of blood to the lower of extremities. So uh, we'll be prepping uh, Mr. Jamross in a minute. and. Uh, the ultrasound technician, Rob Johnson, will uh, be performing the screening. An ultrasound experts uses a uh, procedure table, uh, very comfortable for our uh, screening patients. Uh, Rob Johnson, the uh, technician, is uh, prepping for a carotid artery screening. The screen of the uh, ultrasound machine. Uh, ultrasound experts uses a uh, procedure table. The tests we'll be doing today uh, typically take about five minutes each. Mr. Johnson is looking at the uh, left carotid. And we uh, have color flow Doppler on right now, which uh, uh, allows us to visualize the blood flow through the carotid. Um, we want to see that the lumen of the vessel is filled with color, meaning that there's no areas where blood flow is not moving through the artery. If there's a blockage in the artery, you'll see an area of filling defect, which means that there won't be color flow through that part of the artery. And this looks very good. We then move up more distally to what's called the carotid bulb, which is the area where the artery bifurcates to two arteries, one being the external carotid, which takes blood to the face, the other being the internal carotid, which is the more important of the two and actually is what takes blood up to the brain. Again, we use color flow to determine if there's good blood flow filling throughout the entire lumen of the vessel. This being the external carotid, notice the branch coming off, which helps us to realize that this is the external carotid. If I turn uh, out more laterally, you'll see the internal come in. And in this case, we see that there's little or no plaque in the internal carotid artery. You're capturing these images at certain points in time, correct? Right. As we go, we capture still images. We actually do have the ability, though, to, to capture three to four second clips if we need to. Uh, I'm now going to use pulse wave Doppler to measure the velocity of blood flow through the internal carotid artery. We know what the normal ranges are and the normal velocities through this artery and in this case we see that it's, at, it's uh, a normal velocity through the proximal internal carotid artery which helps us to determine that there is no significant disease in this artery. Now turn your head a little to the left and we will repeat the same procedure on the other side. Again we're noting to uh, take a look here at the common carotid to make sure that there's good blood flow through the common carotid artery and we see here that the the uh, color flow is filling the uh, vessel lumen. This area of the carotid is what's known as the surgically accessible area of the carotid artery and um, the importance of it is is that this is the most uh, likely site of disease Carotid plaque that breaks loose and moves upstream is what will inevitably cause either TIAs, which is 
a transient ischemic attack or a CVA, which is a stroke. Again, we're noting normal velocities in the internal carotid on the right side. And at this point, it's just that easy to determine that there is no significant disease in the carotid arteries on Mr. Jamros.